Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Delray Beach Public Library's Technology Training and Innovation Lab webinar series. Before we begin, take a moment to mute your microphone and familiarize yourselves with the chat window. Please type any questions you have during the presentation in the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible, either during or immediately following the presentation. Our presenter today is Ben Kahn, Instruction and Innovation Librarian here at the library. Ben has a master's degree in library and information science, a bachelor's degree in music and mathematics, as well as a graduate certificate in geospatial analysis. He is a certified Adobe education trainer, a former trombonist and musical director for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, and has a growing body of artistic projects, including musical compositions, logo designs, podcast editing work, and video productions. Here at the library, he has played a key role in the development of the Technology Training and Innovation Lab, as well as our DIY recording studio, partnering with local community orga organizations, such as Bound for College, the KOP Mentor Network, and the Milagro Teen Center. Today, we will be looking at how to use Adobe Photoshop to create composite images by manipulating and combining other images. I will now hand the presentation over to Ben to let him explain the agenda for today. Thanks, Greg. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, is everyone able to hear me okay? Hope so. Uh, I see there's a question or two already. Uh, yeah, Bill, we, we will cover uh, layering in this class a little bit, so hopefully that will help you out with the photo astronomy. Uh, that's, that's an interesting topic. I haven't dealt with that before, but... Uh, um, We'll, we'll, we'll take a look. <laughs> I can't promise much, but, um, but yeah, I, today's class is going to be working with um, putting together composite images um, using Photoshop. Um, so what I plan to cover, um, I am going to kind of introduce Photoshop a little bit for everybody. I, I'm, I'm, before, before I go over the uh, agenda, let me go ahead and take a quick poll just to see what everybody's experience with Photoshop is so far. Uh, I've got a quick poll that I'll send out uh, just answering the question, how familiar are you with Adobe Photoshop? And, uh, again, this is a completely anonymous survey. Uh, if you could just answer that for me so I know how much to deal with the basics versus getting into more advanced topics. Okay. Okay. So heard of it but haven't used it yet. Know your way around it. Want to know a little bit more. That's great. And Raina just joined us. Um, Raina, we're just doing a quick um, survey to get, engage everyone's uh, experience with Photoshop. Um, okay. Okay, and Bill has some experience with GIMP, which yeah, which is a good open source software alternative to Adobe Photoshop. So it'll do the same thing with layers and that. But, uh, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. All right, so it looks like most people have either heard of it but haven't used it yet, or they know a way of the round that they're, you know, an intermediate user. Um, uh, okay, share the results. And let's go ahead and close that. All right, so for those who are new to Photoshop, I am going to go over a bit today on, you know, an introduction to the Photoshop user interface. Uh, I'll also talk about the basics of using the selection tools in Photoshop, as well as working with layers, uh, which to me are the two most important things you need to know to get started with working with Photoshop and image compositing in particular. Um, we'll also talk about adjustments layers and making adjustments to photos. Uh, we'll talk about using masks um, to get into more complex compositing. And we'll look at a couple of other additional tools for getting creative with compositing in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, let's see, before I start sharing my screen, I'm gonna go ahead and share my notes for today. Let's give me a moment to upload those. Okay, there's the notes. And I'm also going to give you a couple of image files that we're gonna use for a first compositing project in Adobe Photoshop. 
Okay, so if you'd like to download those and follow along, that's what we'll be using for the project today, as well as the notes for some of the tools and other elements in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, with that said, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here I am in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, can everybody see the screen all right? Uh, I know we had an issue last week with it being too small for some, but... Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up one of those files. So I'll go to File, Open, and I'm going to go open up the two files that I just gave you. So cook.jpg, I'll open that up in one window. Looks like this with a bunch of different food dishes. And File, Open for the second one. And there is food.jpg. And that one has a picture of a table, looks like that. I can expand that so it's easier to see. Okay. So I've got those two images. Let me just go talk a little bit about the interface in Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop user interface is composed of various panels that contain all the different tools for working in Photoshop. Uh, to view all of them, you can go up to the window menu up at the top. If you click window, all of these are the different panels available in Photoshop. The ones that are checked are the ones currently visible. Uh, so you've got the toolbar over on the left-hand side. Uh, you've got the layers panel, which shows you all of the layers in your project. You've got the brushes panel, which is used for customizing your brushes. Uh, history panel shows all of the different things that you've done in Photoshop. Um, you know, and it, it makes it easy if you want to go back a certain number of steps. Uh, properties panel is going to show you the properties for elements that you click on in Photoshop. Um, and a good, good idea is to start off with what's called the Essentials Workspace. So if you go up to the top of that Windows menu and go to Workspace and click Essentials, that will reset to this default Essentials menu, which has those panels already set up for you. Um, it also has a variety of other workspaces that you can choose from. Uh, if you're working with mostly photography or if you're doing a, a painting project using Photoshop, uh, if you're getting into the 3D elements in Photoshop, you might want to use a 3D workspace. So that's just to show you where those workspace settings are, uh, as well as the list of panels for working in Photoshop. You know, if you can't find a tool that you would like to use, you know, best idea first is to go to a window and make sure that the correct panel is checked and available for you. Uh, now to talk a little bit about the tools panel. Again, I'll be going through some of these, or several of these today. Um, most importantly, the selection tools and the uh, well, working with layers, but uh, some of the other tools as well. Selection tools are mostly up here at the top. Uh, the first one up here is just the move tool. Uh, this is the one you'll use just to select different layers in your project. Uh, if you bring in a single image, uh, Photoshop is going to label that as a background for your image, which is not yet considered a movable layer. Uh, so if you do want to change that around, um, what you can do is uh, click on this little lock next to the layer name, and that will unlock the layer and turn it into something that you can manipulate. So now with the move tool, if I wanted to move this picture around, I could do that. Just set it back in place. And I can also start to make selections and do other manipulations to it. Um, so to give you a rundown of some of the selection tools, uh, these first ones are sort of the basic selection tools. You have a rectangular marquee tool. So this is used to make rectangular selections. And again, you just click and drag using that tool to make your selection. Uh, if you want to constrain it to a perfect square, then you can hold down the shift key while I'm making your selection and that will make sure that what you select is a perfect square. Uh, if you need to move the selection while you're doing the selecting, you can also hold down the space bar and that will allow you to adjust the position of the selection as you're making it. I'm gonna let go of the space bar and that way I can drag it out. And I'll let go of the mouse, still holding down the shift key to make sure it's perfect square. Now, the one I'm going to be using most for this exercise uh, is going to be the elliptical mark key tool, which is going to uh, select elliptical shapes or circular shapes uh, like these dishes that we have here. 
Uh, to clear my selection, by the way, you can use the um, keyboard shortcut Control or Command D. That will clear your selection. Uh, also, I seem to have gotten myself off center a little bit here when I was using the move tool. So if you need to go back a certain number of steps, you can use the command Z or control Z shortcut to go back steps. All right, and that gets me back so I don't have that little extra edge there. All right, getting back to my elliptical marquee tool. Uh, this one works very similar to the rectangular marquee tool, except this one is making ellipses or oval shapes. Um, if I hold down the shift key, that will constrain to a perfect circle. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do to select these dishes in my project. I'm going to start here up sort of in the left corner of this first dish, start drawing my selection. Then I will hold down the space bar so that I can adjust that, line up the left corner, and pull it out a little farther. Okay, I get nice circular selection. If I want to make sure that it's a perfect circle, I can hold down the shift key, and it looks like it didn't change much when I did so. So I've gotten the perfect circle either way. I'll let go of my mouse, and that makes the selection for me. Uh, selections make it easy to either pull things into another image to create your composite or to make selections to just select parts of your image. I'm going to use this to copy that dish into the second image. So I've made my selection. I can do a command C, control C if you're on a PC, or I can go to edit and click copy. Let's do the same thing. Then I'll go over to food.jpg, do a Command V, uh, yep, or Control V if you're on PC. And you can see that in this project over here, I now have two layers. Uh, one, the background layer that I pulled in, and also this new layer, which is just that food dish that I pulled in from the other image. And because it's a layer, I can move it around to different spots and sort of set the table however I'd like. <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and do that with a couple other dishes here. When using your selection tools, uh, there are a couple of icons up here at the top menu. Uh, this first one, uh, that ensures that each time you make a new selection, it's going to be a new selection. You're not going to add anything to it or take away from it. Um, if I were to click this second one here, this is the add to selection tool. It's going to keep what I already have selected and select and make a new selection. So if I were to select that. And line that up to get good selection there. Now I have actually both of these selected, which I don't necessarily want because then when I pull them into the other image, they're going to be linked together and plus I already imported in that other one. Um, so to clear that part of the selection, I can choose the sub subtract from selection tool and I'll just do a big circle around that first selection and that clears that part of the se selection keeping the second part that I did. So that was just to give you an idea of what these buttons do up here, whether you want to create a completely new selection, add to your selection, or subtract from the selection. Uh, the last one is the intersect tool. So this one will intersect the two selections. If I were to make a, a selection that overlaps the first selection that I did, it's going to keep only the part where they intersected. I'll do a command Z to get my full selection back. And now I'm gonna do a command C copy that and command B to paste it into the other image. Let's see, I'll do one more. Let's take the suit. And I'll go back to create a new selection. And again, I'm holding on the space bar, moving that over. And one more little adjustment. I think that'll do right there. All right, Command-C and Command-V. 
So there I have, you know, a very simple composite image. You know, I've taken elements from one image over here and put them together with another image over here. Um, to go over, I'll, I'll get into some of the other um, selection tools later, but just to let you know what they are. Uh, the lasso tool is for making more freehand selections. Um, so again, that's you know useful anytime you've got something where you just want to draw draw a freehand selection, or it doesn't matter too much about where the edges are for the selection. That can be useful, um, especially if you want to use it's called a content aware fill, uh, which can be useful for taking certain parts of your photo out. Uh, to give you an example, let's see. Let me clear my selection here. I'm going to use I'm going to just lasso this little knot in the wood grain here and see if I can take that out using a content aware, aware fill. So I'm going to click on fill here and choose content aware, mode is normal. If I click OK, okay, I need to be on my background layer I need to in order to do this. So I'm going to go click on my background layer to select it, uncheck it so that it's a regular layer and try that again. Fill, content to work fill, and click OK. And you can see it took that knot right out of the wood. Um, you know, that, that content aware fill has a lot of different applications. Anytime you have something in your image that you'd like to take out and still blend the background with it. Uh, moving on with more selection tools, uh, the polygonal lasso tool I'm going to use a little bit later. Uh, this one is for selecting objects that have sort of hard edges to them. You just kind of click and drag around to select the images or the edges of the image. And once you get back to where you started, that will close the selection for you. No pixels are selected. Okay. Oh, okay. That's because I was using the subtract from selection tool. Let me try that one more time. So that's the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to do a deselect on that. <clears throat> the magnetic lasso tool is kind of a neat one too. This one will actually follow the edges of an object in your image. So let me zoom in. I'm going to zoom in using Command Plus, Control Plus if you're on a PC. Um, so for the magnetic lasso tool, I'm going to try to select a spoon here. Uh, it's important, you know, to make sure that the background from what you're trying to select is a more or less different colors. That that way, or at least that the object you're selecting has very well defined edges. So you can see as I'm dragging along the edge of the spoon here, it's just kind of hugging the edge to make that selection. It gets a little messed up when I go onto the tablecloth there, but I can fix that later on if I need to by going to the subtract tool and I can select my other selection tools. Maybe I'll just go back to the lasso tool and I can clean up my selection that way. In any case, still not perfect, but you get the idea. And again, that was the magnetic, magnetic lasso tool. Um, you know, I'm accessing each of these tools. Uh, on a Mac, you need to basically hold down the mouse key to get to these secondary tools. On PC, you can do a right click and it will do the same thing. Uh, some other interesting tools, um, the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. These are two of my favorite. Uh, the magic wand tool will attempt to select things by color. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to select the soup and the bowl over here to make some changes to it, uh, one thing you want to watch on the, the magic wand tool is the tolerance level up here. Uh, the higher the tolerance level, the wider the range of colors it's going to try to select. 
Uh, you can choose whether or not you want the, the selection to be contiguous. So I mean, do you want to select just the yellow over here or the yellow and the egg white as well? Uh, if you do want it to be contiguous, so together, then check that box, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to click once. And that happened because I'm on the wrong layer again. So again, I want to make sure that I'm on the soup layer here, which is layer three. And I'll try that selection again. Okay, and I got most of it. I'm still a little bit in the middle I'd like to get. I'll do a few more clicks. Okay, and that took care of it. And there I've got just the soup selected, nothing around it. So what I'm gonna do now that I've made that selection is I'm going to add an adjustments layer to turn this into a tomato bisque. Um, the way you do that is after making the selection, you go down in your layers panel down to create new fill or adjustment layer. It's this little middle icon there. Looks like a circle sort of halfway filled in. And I'm going to choose a solid color fill. And I'm going to choose a reddish color and click OK. So that's filled in my selection completely using a solid red color. Uh, now that doesn't quite look like the soup that I had underneath. So the way that you fix that is by blending those two layers together. The color fill layer with the one beneath it. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the blend mode, which is this little bar here that says normal. And click the drop down on that and go down to a color blend mode. And that will blend the two together so that I have sort of a reddish, actually that's a little too pink for me. I'm wondering if there's a different blend mode I can use that gives me more of a red. Actually like this one, the soft light. But there we go. So I've changed my yellowish cream soup into more of a tomato bisque looking soup. Um, let's make another change to one of these other dishes. Uh, this time I'm going to show you the quick selection tool. Quick selection attempts to make um, make a guess at what you're trying to what object you're trying to select um, by dragging around the interior of it. So I'm going to see if I can select just the egg yolk here. Drag along the edges just to make sure I get all of it. Okay, that's pretty good there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'll do another one of those filler adjustments layers. And let's go ahead and make a green eggs and ham out of this. Uh, for the Dr. Seuss fans out there. I'm gonna choose solid color again. This time I'll go to a green, click okay. And again, I'll go to my blend modes, click color. And there I have a green egg. With Minestrone, I, you know, I like to show everybody a little bit about what's called the spot healing brush, which is another one of the tools down in Photoshop. Uh, let's see. Looks like a little Band-Aid here. And the way this works, I'm going to choose a layer that I can select. So I'm going to go back to layer one, which is that soup layer. And I'm going to try to remove these little black things, these little olives or whatever they are from my minestrone. Um, once I've got my spot healing brush tool selected, I'm going to increase the size on it. About 30 pixels, that should get it. And what I want to do is just kind of center the olives in the middle of that circle, click once, and that automatically fills in <coughs> that space with what the image had around it. Uh, you know, this is, this is what uh, professional photographers and others will use to take off blemishes and things like that from portrait photos. Um, you know, it's, it's great for, again, just removing certain things that you don't want in your image. Uh, if I wanted to make this uh, tomato bisque even smoother, I could do something over here, again, selecting the correct layer. I could smooth that out using the same tool. Okay, so again, that was the spot healing brush. Uh, let me go ahead and do one more, just so we've got the hang of this. Uh, I'm gonna 
repeat what I did from the beginning. So using the elliptical marquee tool uh, with a new selections, <clears throat> I'm going to select the croissants over here. Hold space bar down, click and drag to make my selection. Do a command C to copy and paste it into the second image. And this one, I'm actually going to use the lasso tool. So the regular lasso tool, I'm just gonna draw on the inside of these croissants a little bit so that I can brighten them up on the inside. Let's see, I'll do an add selection to get the one over here as well. Right. And I'm gonna add a filler adjustments layer to this one. This time I'm gonna use the vibrance layer. And okay, so once I've added my vibrance layer, <coughs> what I can do is up in the properties panel here, adjust the vibrance up a little bit just to brighten the inside of those croissants. Let's see, if I darken it, you can see, you know, reducing the vibrance makes it a bit duller. Increasing the vibrance just gives it a little extra punch. It's kind of a minor change, but you get the idea. All right, so that should give you, you know, a basic idea of how to put two images together and also how to do some photo manipulations uh, using adjustments layers. Uh, adjustments layers are, <clears throat> are kind of a useful tool in Photoshop uh, because they're considered a non-destructive element. Um, if, if I wanted to later take one of my adjustments layers, uh, such as this green color fill layer, and turn it off and get my egg back to the way it was, then all I have to do is click this little eyeball in my layers panel next to that layer to turn it on and off. Um, and that, you know, that is the advantage of working with layers is, you know, one, it enables you to move different parts of your image around. Um, and it allows you to undo or put back in place changes that you made uh, using your adjustments layers. <laughs> All right. So now I'd like to take you on uh, and just show you some of the other projects that I've done, uh, both here for the library and just on my own, um, to give you some other ideas for ways you can get creative uh, with creating composite images in Photoshop. Uh, just to show you what some of these look like. Uh, this next one is one I did for a marketing campaign here at the library for the um, for the technology training and information lab that you see behind me. Uh, you know, this was an image I basically took a picture of the back of the library. Um, I was also lucky enough to go on a vacation to China or, uh, late last year uh, before all the virus and everything hit and uh, caused worldwide panic. But um, but, you know, this is a picture of the mountains in Zhangjiazhe, the Wulingyan National Park in China. And I kind of put these together um, to make it look like those mountains were growing out of the library. And I'm going to show you how I went about that. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up those files. All right, so I've got my library here. And now it's here. Okay, so this is the original one. Um, if, you know, in addition to using adjustments layers, if you just want to make images, uh, you know, adjustments to an entire image uh, and you want them to be more or less permanent, uh, another option that is not non-destructive, so this will make permanent changes to your imagery, uh, is to go up to image and do your adjustments up there. So the image menu up the top, if I go to adjustments, I can play around with the hue and saturation on this image just to kind of brighten up the color of the mountains because it was a rather gray day. And the mountains 
as I saw them, had more of an orange tint to them. So I'm going to adjust that. Get the saturation just a little bit. And I'll also adjust the brightness. So brightness and contrast under the adjustments layer. And bring it up for the entire image. That looks okay. Let's see if I adjust the contrast. Does that do anything? I'm going to just do a hair tweak there. Click OK. Okay, so I've prepared the mountains the way I want them. Uh, now let me go ahead and change this to a regular layer by unlocking my background. And I'm going to copy and paste using Command C and Command V. Copy this into the other image. And I'm going to drag the ends of it out. So these are roughly the same size. And I'll go ahead and unlock this one as well. I want to send these, these mountains to the back first. So what I'm going to do is in your layers panel, you can control the stacking order of your layers. So if I just click and drag layer one, which my, is my mountains, to the bottom, that will send it in back of the library. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a mask that will hide this part of the image. Uh, so it, you know, it hides the, the sort of hole in the library there and lets the, mo the mountains come through. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go back to my selection tools and go to the polygonal lasso tool. So again, you know, I've got sort of these hard edges to work with, so that's why I'm choosing this tool. And if I start right about here, start dragging to the back. And for the polygonal lasso tool, you just click, then move the mouse and click again. This one, you're not clicking and dragging, you're just clicking at each point where you want to draw a new line. The line down at the bottom is actually a little curved, so I'm going to have to cheat a little bit here. And back up to the top. That will complete my selection. And once I've made the selection, I can go up to my layer menu at the top. And I'm going to choose layer mask. And I want to hide the selection that I made. So I'm going to click hide selection. And I made it to the wrong layer. Let me go ahead and do a command Z on that. I wanted to do this to my library layer. So let me do that again. All right, got the selection, go to layer, layer mask, and hide selection. There we go. Now I can see my mountains underneath. I've got a big old hole in the library there. And I'm going to use the move tool to bring the mountains down so I can see them a little better. But I still want the top of them to sort of poke over because I'm actually going to bring that into the library as well. I want to center it a little more, so I'm going to move this. Yeah, yeah right there. Right there. Right there. All right, so in order to bring the mountains into the library. Uh, There's a trick that I'm going to use. Uh, going back to my mountains layer, I'm going to hide the library for just a moment by turning that layer off. And I'm going to use a quick selection tool for this. Uh, let's see if I zoom in a little bit. You can see better. If I just start clicking and dragging on the inside of the mountains here, that'll select the top of the mountains for me. Let's see. As much of the trees as I can. All right, just kind of painting that out. All right. All right. 
So that's not too bad. Now, let's see. All right. Now, if I go back to my library layer here and go to the mask, which is this white and black thing that you see next to the library layer. So that's a mask being applied to the library layer. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in order to add to the mask so that those mountains show through. Um, since I've made the selection here, it's going to constrain where I can paint. Uh, so to paint, I'm going to use the paint or the brush tool, which is down here just under the spot healing brush. Uh, the, way, the way masks work, um, everything that is white is revealed. Everything that, that's black is hidden. Um, so I want to make this part of the library here where the mountains should be. Uh, I want to change that to black. So I want to make sure that my black color is selected down here, and it is. Okay, and going back to my brush tool, I want to check my brush settings real quick. I'm going to do yeah, normal mode. Uh, the size is just about right. Opacity, I want to be 100%. And I'm just going to start painting to increase my mask area here. Okay, notice that I can't paint over where I've made the selection. So that's why I made the selection is to constrain where I can paint. All right, and then let's see if I zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I can release my selection. So now I have the mountains poking up into the library. Now, the last thing that I did to this image to kind of finish it off is I wanted to make sure that I could see the mountains around here. So I, I wanted the mountains to have sort of the same, the same perspective look that I had at the library with the wall here. Um, so the way I accomplished that was to go up to edit and do what's called a perspective warp. Now I wanna make sure in my layers panel, I've got the right layer selected. So I actually want to warp the mountains layer. So I'm going to select that layer, go to edit, and do a perspective warp. And this is, this is really kind of an advanced tool, but I just want to show you it because it's kind of cool. Uh, the way it works is you define different panels that you know, will determine this, the perspective for you. Uh, so I'm going to draw three here to sort of mimic the walls that I had for the artwork at the library. Um, drag that out there. Drag this down here. And I'm gonna create another panel over here and connect it to this one. And finally a third on this side. All right, and once that's done, that's step one when using this perspective warp tool. Second step is to go to warp. And now from here, I can move warp pins to manipulate perspective. So I want to be able to see the end here. Just pull this down.
There we go. And twix out. That'll do. All right. So that gives you an idea of how to use uh, even some of the more advanced features in Photoshop. Uh, you know, there's plenty of other tools to explore. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Craig and see if we have any questions. Sorry, I had a little trouble unmuting myself. All right, perfect. I don't see any other questions in the chat unless there is any last minute questions. Uh, yeah. We can't uh, see the chat so that we can type anything. Ah. So sure. at least I can't. On there we go. Uh, just one quick question is uh, mm -hmm. on my question about photo astronomy. Uh, are layers additive? Can I make the layers additive so that uh, so that I can put a bunch of the same photograph on top of each other? Yeah. Uh, I mean, and if so, which way do they add? Should I should I so if it's a sky photograph which is black with with white stars, does does the white add do, or does the black add? Should I use them? Uh, for example, should I use a negative and add negatives together? Or should I use a positive and add them together? Right. Um, now, I mean, there, there's various things you could do there. I mean, you know, you, you can pull in a bunch of layers like that. Uh, you can adjust the opacity of each. Uh, so sort of, you know, determine how transparent each one is going to be. Uh, that could be used to affect, you know, the influence on each. Um, you know, there are, you, you also could, I mean, um, you could take the colors out of the image, you know, certain colors out of uh, one image uh, using uh, either the the curves adjustments layer or uh, something. Uh, the curves are levels. I, I would check those. Um, but again, th those are just a couple other adjustments layers uh, that you can find in that same spot I was looking at earlier. Yeah. Okay. Let's... All okay. right. Good. All right, so thank you for joining us for the Delray Beach Public Library's Technology Training and Innovation Lab webinar series. Following today's presentation, you will receive an email with instructions for scheduling a one-on-one -on -one follow up video conference with the presenter, as well as a short survey about your experience at today's webinar. Please continue to visit our website at delraylibrary.org to sign up for more online classes, check out our many digital resources, or consider making a donation to support programs like the one you've just attended. Thank you.